by then everybody was getting into it yeah. so like i was literally a rock star just we were coming to you with it and yeah with it, whether you liked yeah, it no. or whether you, you didn't it was it really was that we were, we were smoking spliffs we were drinking <laughs> beer all the way down <laughs> seriously <laughs> all the way down and back again Can I play your guitar? Through Wonderwall. I'm a good singer. Can I sing with you? Oh, give us another. Come on, mate. One more song. 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 Hello and welcome to the One More Songcast. I'm Lee. I'm Luke. Right, so we've got a second Lee joining us today, Mr. Lee Jones from Flash Flood. How are we, Lee? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Right. I only saw you last day. Uh, when was it? When was Friday. it? Friday. Friday. Good gig, wasn't it? It was good. It was a good gig. Yeah, good. so. Me and Lee, we're in Flash Floods as the band, five-piece band normally, but we did our first gig as a trio. How did you find it, Lee? Because we had a few teething issues I was to just, I was just saying, actually, sorry, it's Luke. Luke, Luke yeah, yeah, it? yeah. Sorry, we've only sorry. met once, haven't we? Uh, uh, we have, actually. The only time we met was when, when you recorded the Do You Do Wonderwall part in the uh, in the theme song, so... <laughs> For some reason I did it in a southern accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's meant to be a northern, <laughs> northern <laughs> podcast, and we've got... Southern Wonderwall, yeah, yeah. Really bad Southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen to that I'm going to listen to every time you do a podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it was all right, wasn't it? But I think we could have done with a bit more rehearsal, couldn't we? On that yeah, I think... But it, I think it went down all right. Yeah, think, it, think, well, to be fair, because it was Ladies' Day at the Grand National, um, half the people, half the customers at the Alston had been at Ladies' Day all day and they'd been on the beers since nine yeah, o'clock in the yeah. morning. Yeah. So people were singing along, but we just got no cheers between songs because yeah. it was like they didn't know where they were. Yeah, no. <laughs> there, was a, there was a girl flamenco dancing at the end. Oh yeah, stuff. to she what was class just, flamenco just, dancing? She was just for some reason she she was like literally stamping to the, yeah. the floor. Yeah, I thought she was going to go through the floor at one point, and she, she was in pretty just, high heels as well. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, but we didn't do any flamenco. But no, we didn't do any flamenco. <laughs> We did a bit of jazz, uh, we did a bit of like a swing version of... Uh, oh, we did, yeah. Uh, uh, somebody, somebody told, told me about the Killers. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'd like yeah. to hear that version, to be yeah. fair. Oh. Was, that, yeah. improv- was it, that completely improvised? You know, I did, have you heard of Mike Flowers Pops? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Flowers yeah. Pops, he kind of did it like in the 90s. It was the 90s, wasn't it? I'm sure it was the 90s. Yeah. Maybe. It did, it did, was that he did, did a Wonderwall version? That's yeah, right. Yeah. So, he, yeah, so yeah. he did all these, all these like yeah. really good jazz versions. Oh, nice. Of, uh, yeah. And, it's a good idea. Yeah. It, it went down was, better. It went down better than Chris thought it was going to go down. <laughs> yeah, I was, just, I was thinking of. Uh, have you heard of Dread Zeppelin? Dread Zeppelin. No, the tribute. I guess in their tribute act. But it's it's a, it's an Elvis who sings reggae versions of Led Zeppelin songs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. So I guess yeah, you know, like when it comes to twisting. <laughs> <Twisted songs. laughs> There's one to check out. Oh, nice, nice. So, um, how would you describe yourself then? So, obviously, we know you're a bassist. Um, how would you describe yourself with what you do musically? Oh, musically. Uh, oh, I've started. I, I think I started doing. It's funny. I got. A, I got a, a picture last night of me when I was 16. So when I started, I was. I was into. I was into heavy metal and things like that, but then I've kind of got into more of the blues, really. Blues, bluesy yeah. and jazzy yeah. type stuff. Yeah. But I've not really actually playing that live. So I used to play, in a, like, with the with the uke bass. Okay, right. Like, with me dad, he, he plays, like, sax. Right. Um, so, and then Al, Al McKenna, he's he's another guy who's who's been around for a good while, like, on the, on the Preston music scene. Yeah writes his own songs so and, and so we used to just go around all the, all the open mics nice, doing nice. doing jazz jazz songs and cool, stuff like that cool. it, was, it was all right it was good so so yeah so i've kept when i'm writing my own thing i've not really i'm just getting more confidence up with that now yeah moment, we'll you know, get to that like, you know, we, yeah. yeah yeah so do you want to start off with our opening question yeah so lee jones what does music mean to you oh what does music mean to me I, th- I think, for me, it's a communication. It, it's it's definitely something that 
that you've you've got to put your heart and soul into. Mm. It's something that, that you 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 want to move people, and it, that's what it's about. Absolutely, you know, it's it's it, it's more the vibe. I, I get there's loads of people who are into shredding and and playing fast fingers, mm. and I, and I, and I, and, I, and I, I appreciate it. I mean, I've I've been into you know you know heavy metal and thrash sort of music the, the, the guitarist you know like Kirk Hammett and, yeah. and you've got you know all these guys who can play amazing soul solos but for me it's the vibe it's the vibe the, it's the whole band yeah that makes sense well, that's, that's, that's a good track. answer that's a good answer that's the first that everyone's actually come up with a different Sl- one ever so slightly haven't they yeah, yeah I yeah. think everyone is really going for that and you kind of summed it up in one word communication because it does just speak to you I was speaking yeah, to someone yeah. about this the other day and like they're like, what? Why? Why music? I was like, because it just spoke to me, and that's that's yeah. it. So communication is a very, very good answer. It's like, it's like, I think the the songs that really hit you, the ones that that come out with. I mean, it's like when you. I mean, when, when I'm thinking now, you know, like when you come off the top of your head and you're in an interview <laughs> situation. But it's like when you think of Wonderwall, for instance. The, as soon as that. That opening chords come on. I mean, I know everybody. It's, it's played to death now. No, yeah, yeah. But but the the way that opens up and like if you if you listen to that in a, with a really good stereo system and like listen to it, it, it just comes at you. Yeah. You know mm. when it comes in. It, it, yeah. And that's the kind of thing you're after. You want. It's you weird want as well, isn't it? So you say about you, communication, but like different songs and different. It's weird how different songs in different genres speak to different people in different ways. Yeah. As well, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I, I love I love the way that, that a song will come on, and it it, it instantly transports you straight mm. there to where you were when you absolutely and certain times certain groups of friends certain things that were going yeah, on yeah breakups or you know, all that kind absolutely, of thing you know yeah, you know yeah. the killers album the hot fuss uh that that was or is it hot fuzz is it hot fuzz or is it i think hot it's hot fuzz? fuzz is it, it's hot yeah fuzz, isn't it? i'm thinking of the, the film hot fuzz, <laughs> hot fuzz that's what i think of. i think that's what i think of, yeah <laughs> Yeah, but but that one for me was like I went through a massive breakup with that, and it, but it was like, but it it, it solidified a moment. Yeah, the mm. whole album was. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Know, that makes sense. You know, like yeah, right. So, where did where did your sort of, where did music really start to communicate with you? What do you remember first listening to? <sighs> do you know, it was funny. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and. It's definitely my dad's my dad's record collection because he had he, he was well into his reggae and stuff, but he was he will he loved Supertramp, right? Oh, Supertramp, yeah, yeah, I have, and, yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, Pink Floyd. So like you've got you've got all these albums that you open up. They've got like gatefold sleeves, and you've got all, obviously all the images. Mm. One one of them's called Crime of the Century, and it's it's basically up in up in like outer space, and it's just. Um, well, it's like prison bars that in outer space with these two two fists hanging onto them, that and it's in outer space. So as a kid, like you're like, you know what is going on there? <laughs> you know, you know, like, yeah. I just and and then obviously Super Tramper. Have you have you heard? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've not you know, listened to him much to be honest, the, but. You know, they've got some absolute class, uh, just really good funky pop, but. But they're out there, progressive. So progressive. it was the artwork that drew you to um, yeah, yeah, music more than the actual music at the start. You see, I yeah. mean, I'm obviously an oldie, like you know, like so, no, yeah. so, but so we've kind of, you know, us like Gen Xers, if you will, we've we've grown up with albums, mm. and it, it's like I miss now. I I mean, I literally got rid of my albums, and it's all sort of. It's come back full circle because I, because people realise that it's nice to own. Mm. It's nice to own a collection yeah. instead of just streaming it. You know, no, yeah. that makes sense. It's, I think the sad uh, day was when uh, all the Beatles albums got put on Spotify. That wasn't too long ago, was yeah, it? Yeah, no. yeah, that was like a Christmas Day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah, a, it was, it was a Christmas yeah, it was. Day a couple yeah. of years ago. I remember yeah. thinking that was great though, because I thought, oh, I can get all these albums for free. But like you say, I I do sometimes listen to vinyls and that, and the artwork and reading bits and bats inside yeah, the, the yeah. artwork is. I'm the same though, because yeah. like, I grew up with CDs, and like even yeah. the CD, you'd still have a lyric book yeah. inside. Yeah. You'd still have yeah. that collectible thing, and it was great because you go to a HMV, you go to Woolworths when it was about, yeah. yeah. And like, oh, a single had come out. You could buy a single at that point, and then they stopped that and went just. Really, for albums. they stopped. They mm. stopped. They stopped the singles, yeah. Really? 
Because um, I mean, I, I used to go, you've heard of Action Records, Action Records at the top of Church Street. I've heard of it, yeah. Uh, I'm pointing out here, Ridge. <laughs> in Chorley. <laughs> Ridge, <Charlie. laughs> but, but, um, but in Ac- Action Records, it was, it was uh, people would bring their albums, sell their albums and buy second hand stuff. So that was just like TK Maxx of Records. It was like, and the amount of times that I went in there and discovered new bands, because they'd always have something on. You know, yeah, you'd, yeah. Always, so you'd be, you'd be oh, I'm, and like, I've discovered, have you heard of Masters of Reality? No, I've and, heard uh, of them. I've heard of them. And uh, they're Masters the guys of. who um, produced um, Queens of the Stone Age. You know, right. You know, like, the, the first kind of big album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Songs for the Death. For the yeah. Death, oh, what on, an album, you know, by the way, yeah. But you'll hear, you'll hear and King's X, another band that I've mm. discovered that, you know, like, you, that you wouldn't normally. Mm. You wouldn't Do you think normally. there's a magic in that? Take almost going to a record store and taking a punt on something rather yeah. than say googling it or yeah. listening to some stuff yeah. on YouTube or whatever. Yeah. You can actually just go. Oh, I might give this a bash. It might be crap, or you might fall in love. Yeah, with yeah, and that's, lottery, and, that's that, and that's the yeah. thing. And, and, and as well, I mean, uh, Noel Gallagher's uh, like said about you know uh, the fact that. You you just hear songs now. You just hear like you'll mm. you'll just have like a suggestion of a, of a of a single or a song where you don't really sit down and listen to an no. album now. No, you know, and no. you don't get the artists what what they're actually trying to no, you know, you're get right. across. Because it is a story throughout the album. A lot, yeah. a lot of albums, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. You know, yeah. And generally, sad. generally, you know, in thirty seconds whether you're going to like it or not, mm. don't you? As well, so people only give it that time, and that's. Even that's the unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, even that's the unfortunate thing about about this this generation where it's gone to everything's online. You can access everything. No one's got yeah. patience anymore. Yeah. yeah, and I'm I'm the same with TV TV series. Mm. If someone tells me, "Oh, that series is good," but it, it takes a while to get into it, I'm like, "Listen, I'm out five out of seven yeah. nights a week. I haven't yeah. got the time to no. get into no, the series." No, oh. so the amount of box sets so. <laughs> We got such a selection now. <laughs> you used, to, you used to have to have rich parents with a sky, like a massive uh, Sky subscription in Sky Movies. Didn't I'm, you? I'm going through uh, Monkey at the moment though. Right, <laughs> Monkey Magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 52 episodes. It's like ridiculous. Oh, it's like wow. <laughs> All an hour and a half long. <laughs> oh, oh, mate, it's funny though. So <laughs> when did that? So when did going into record shops, um, looking at the artwork, taking a punt on on albums and records? When did that then turn into a? Uh, actually, I want to actually get out there and start doing it myself and oh. I'd be interested because I was thinking at home I was like what do I actually want to ask you today and I wanted to ask you like why you why bass basically not yeah. anything wrong with bass but yeah. um, I suppose it in an ideal world most people go, oh yeah I want to be doing these mad riffs on or being the lead yeah. singer what what well, I'm asking you two questions here but what got you into bass and what got you into gigging yeah I don't I think um it's funny because I've th- there's a mate of mine who's just got in, back in touch with me who was like part of the whole thing, and he I moved to Horton at the time, so I was about fifteen, sixteen, and it just so happened up until that point I'd I'd been listening to music with my dad and that, and I'd done a few piano lessons when I was younger, yeah. so I had a little bit of musicality, but but the um, but the whole thing was because I moved into this area. I had a mate who lived next door who, who had a flight in vain, you know, like, and he was into all these right. albums. And I, up until that point, I was more of a trendy. The first gig I ever went to was Five Star. Okay. You know, Five Star. <laughs> he's like, he's like England's answer to the, the Jackson Five, right? Okay. Basically, but but really pop, really, yeah. really glitzy pop, and you know, like it, it bites as well. But but they're another band that you need to check out. Right. Like, yeah, amazing band, amazing band, but. The, the the thing with it, with it was was that it brought it off the page. So I had always seen music as being something that you consumed, and you, you I didn't even see it as you you consumed it. It was always something other. So it was it was something that other people did. Yeah. So all of a sudden you'd go around to your mate. I had a mate who literally had a drum kit in the corner, right? And he literally let me sit in with his his jazz his his jazz drummer teacher had come round. And give him a lesson, right? So I'd say, All right, I'm off. No, you're all right, sit there. So I'd just sit there and like watch him, yeah, have a, have a lesson, you know, like wow, you know, so like, you're getting these mini pieces of, so, of so this all the time. Really, like, gives you wow, maybe I could do that, right, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. like, and there's what, and then there's, you, you, you know, they're all talking about guitars and the reading Kerrang and, yeah. and Metal Hammer, and then 
And then a base came up for sale. I literally walked down to Wire Walton with me 50 quid, like, yeah. like you know, I'd, I'd badgered my mum for 50 <laughs> quid. And, and it was, and I think it was just, and I, and I think it was just that everybody were playing guitar. And I think it was more like, go on, Lee, why don't you play bass? Yeah, you know, like, yeah. because, just to be because, different. Because, <laughs> yeah, because we, we, we could do with yeah, the bass yeah, play, yeah. you know, you know, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. So, but I think it was one of them things, you know yourself, you know yourself when, even if you can't play a note when you cause it with a guitar, it's so accessible. But as soon as you sit one on your knee, it's, it's there. Mm, you, you, it's you, yours. Can, you kind of, you, something goes. Yeah. Mm. Something, you know, and you kind of think, I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm going to get into this. Yeah, that's wicked. You yeah. know, and I, and I think that's that was the thing after that. So know. there weren't any bass. So how old were you when you picked, first picked up a bass then? About 15. Yeah. Right. And were there any yeah. bassists that, that like, inspired you at the time or, or was it simply a case yeah. of we just need a bass player and that's what no, you No, yeah, no, it was because I'd, I'd got into, so I, over time I'd got, I'd got into Metallica and like, so that at the time the album, the latest album was Master of Puppets, like it was, and Cliff Burton had actually just died actually right. in 1986, so. Um, yeah, that was the so, last album yeah, exactly so on, it was wasn't it? So it's, we're talking 1987-ish, you mm. know, like 88, mm. sort of when I was really getting into it. And um, and it was, yeah, I was just all over Cliff Burton and um, Joey Bellard. No, jo Joey Belladon was the singer, isn't he? Out of Anthrax. I can't, I'm trying to think of the... Oh. Oh, no. what's the bassist called? Can't think. Oh, can't uh, think. That's, that's done me head in now. I hope you don't listen to it. <laughs> but, uh, no, but no, but, but again, but these 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 basses were were just rattling out these these really like fast bass lines, and obviously to keep up with all these thrash, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 thrash yeah. riffs, you know, like you know you've heard Metallica, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so yeah, that and that's that's me kind, and I mean this, this was like my, my dad was. He couldn't believe I was getting into that because he's into reggae and dub and right. blues and jazz and, <laughs> and all this kind of thing. And then all of a sudden, I get this long hair and I've got heavy metal t shirts. On. Was he bothered by that? Or was uh, it just like you crack on? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, he was, he was. He was just well into the fact that I was into music. That's good. That's you know, good. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You oh, know, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So, obviously, you then took up the bass. When did you join your first band, and what were you, what were you actually doing in that band? So, oh. You see, the, the first in, the first in for me was we had an amazing music teacher at school. Mm. So before he came, so I was about 14, so this is before I even got into bass. In fact, we had a bass at school. But before that, it was all clarinets and right. all the musty stuff, you know, like recorders and yeah, all that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. But then he brought in drum machines, a drum kit, guitars. Uh, keyboards and all that kind mm. of stuff. So we all got into keyboards, you know, like that, you know, the one finger chords and drum yeah. beats and, you know, all that kind of thing. But then he, he basically transformed it to the point where we 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 started playing. I mean, we, we did we did um, a Red Nose Day and they actually converted the arts theatre into uh, basically a pop concert for the day. It was like a 15 minute, 20 minute concert. There was right. three acts on. So we had a girl in our year who could sing a bit like Whitney Houston. Right. right. There was a guy who liked to play a little bit of folk. And then there was us who were into heavy metal. But <laughs> we made it, because it was Red Nose Day, we did, yeah. um, we did the theme tune to Trumpton. Right, right? okay. To, to open up. <laughs> so, so we came on to Trumpton. And then there was, um, we had a nuclear assault. No. They, were, they were like a, no. there was loads of thrash bands around at the right, time, yeah. but they'd got um, this really cool tapping solo. So the guitarist had sorted that out, but he had had a broken arm just before. Oh, wow. So we had to rehearse at lunch times the, the week before, right. like going up to this because we'd not rehearsed. He'd only just got his cast off. So all the people, all the all the kids have been listening to us, uh, you know, you know. And then we played this. We put our own lyrics to this. Uh, I mean, if you listen back to it, it'd, it'd be absolute trash. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we put our own lyrics about being at school and it, and it being rubbish and all that. But but it was literally like a five minute thing with this tapping thing. But the the uh, the music teacher had basically he'd sorted out a strobe light for it during that. Mm. So by the end of the day. We'd literally packed the the uh, the whole the whole 
like uh, school theater, school, like, the yeah. theater every time. So everybody were buying tickets for like five p, oh, ten p. Nice, nice. So it was a charity, charity yeah, thing, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, but by then everybody was getting into it. Yeah. So like, I was literally a rock star for a day. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I, was yeah, like, yeah. I was literally, you know, it's the only time I've ever been a rock star. <laughs> but, but to be honest, it was just, it, it was like, you it on was a, oh, it was a real good yeah, taste yeah. of just good fun. You know, it was good feedback. And, uh, and the music teacher give us that, he set the PA up, yeah. put Mike the kit up, you know, and give us that, yeah, you know, yeah. that thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, and it, you so know, from then on, did you feel respected in your in your year and stuff? After that, you were kind of yeah, like you were the music I, I, guy. I, I suppose we, we were the we were the fifth years anyway, and I yeah. mean, you know, we'd all grown our hair and all that, and uh, <laughs> you know, it was all that kind of thing. But it was, but it but it did it did spur us on, like, yeah, that's you know, wicked. yeah, that's yeah, wicked. For, you know, so but how, how long did that band carry on for? Sorry. Oh, so that that kind of was just for that, and then right. we kind of all left school. And you know, like how things yeah, go in yeah. life. Mm. People, you know, different colleges, different jobs, and then. We, but we we did get a band together after school, and it was uh, we called ourselves Blowback. Blowback. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Blowback. Yeah. So, uh, but but that but that was quite cool. We wrote our own stuff. We did. Um, we did like covers, Hendrix covers, Cream covers, yeah, and things yeah. like that. You no know. drug influences in there, though. Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, there's yeah. to be honest, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, but but I mean, it was it was of the time. No, yeah. You know, so blowback, blowback, they turned into splashback. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but that's it, you know. But it's it's. Uh, but yeah, we, but it's funny. The Preston was a little bit different, and we we Ooh. started getting gigs at. It was called the King's Arms, which is now a butty shop at the end of Church Street and right, the Lamb yeah. the Lamb used to do yeah, gigs and yeah. that's now a block of flats yeah. well, they've, they've actually converted it into a bit of an arts place now I've not been but it's uh, but yeah it was a different scene then there was yeah, loads right. and loads of venues loads of bands in town right I reckon we take we basically get half an hour on the camera before it goes off so we go it, we do it in breaks so yeah. we've, we've kind of covered your early early years so we're then going to move into different parts of your life in the next okay. part so we'll pause it there and we'll come back in a second so see you in a bit see you in a minute hi there how you doing it's me the legend that is i'd just like to take a little bit of time out of the episode to promote a certain music shop that i've had really good experience with so it is blackstone music and it's located in Heskin Shopping Village. Chris Bannister there has been really helpful to me. I had trouble a couple of years ago um, buying from a sort of commercial superstore one of my acoustic guitars. Um, so I went to Chris and ended up getting a completely new guitar. Ever since he's helped me with, you know, fixing bits and bats on the guitar and he's just a really helpful, friendly guy. He was up always got the time of day for you with music related questions and stuff like that so big shout out to blackstone music as i said it's in heskin shopping village go and have a look at it it's got they've got some great stuff there and some great service back to the episode hello and welcome back to the podcast i hope you enjoyed your advert we're here with lee jones and my f- very good friend luke of course <laughs> so we covered the early life uh, lee so what was uh, your experiences in sort of later years, your twenties, thirties? What happened? Well, going with <clears throat> blowback, kind kind of carried on. We we started playing in Preston. We didn't we didn't do loads of gigs, but um, it's like you were saying before. Why was I why, why was I a bass player? But I ended up just playing all around Preston. Mm. Um, and <laughs> there was more venues then. There was more bands as well. But but uh, but basically, I was uh, I just I'd just play in all all sorts of different bands because I was playing. Everybody loved like Led Zeppelin and um, what else were kind of Deep Purple and that kind of thing. Black Sabbath, all the all the rock tunes, all the all the pub rock tunes, a bit of yeah. um, Brian Adams and all that kind of thing. That was the that was the thing at the day. I mean, we're playing indie at the moment, mm-hmm. you know, and that's that seems to be. A staple, you know. There's still the rock. You know, yeah. there's still people still love the Black Sabbath and what have you. Mm. But um, but so so later, I suppose with the with the with the blowback thing, that kind of petered out. We 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 had a couple of drummers, but then I joined a band called Stands in Jail, um, which 
which was an absolute crazy band, crazy indie band. But that, what I would say would is true indie. Whereas the, the <laughs> not that the Europe the indie yeah, we're yeah, into yeah. isn't true, but it, but like it's, but it's still independent, isn't it? Mm. But it's but it's I suppose the true indie. What I mean by that is is that we're more baggy. We were more into the Stone Roses. We were kind of we were around about when um, Oasis were around, but we were a lot more, a lot more sort of punky, really. A lot right. More, yeah. Much much louder and much more brash. And and we I mean we had a guitarist that was into Frank Zappa, um, wow. and we we would just play for hours. We would I mean sometimes with empty places because we would just go <laughs> off. You know, you'd, you'd play a song, but then the middle eight would turn into a middle sort of half an hour. <laughs> you, know, you know, it so was just like... Indie just, punk meets prog. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then, but he had, like, Mick, Mick Billington, he's, uh, he's playing with uh, Zoo Maker now. Uh, and he also played with Trippy Tarka for a while. But he's, um, he, he had this Vox amp. And he had to turn it up to get. I was talking to you about this, yeah. you know, to get that sound. But it was a, it was tuned, so it wasn't an AC thirty. It was a hundred watt. Right, but, right. Yeah, but like it would make your ears bleed. <laughs> but but you know, like at the time, you know, it was amazing because we we had all the gear and we 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 basically lived together. You know, like the, it was the drummer and the the the. Mick and Alex, they used to live basically in the same house. Right. They literally knocked through from the bedroom uh, so that the bathroom was a vocal booth. So they, <laughs> they literally drilled through so that they put actual plugs in. Nice. So they, you know, like, and then so you'd record record on a, on a, on a four track, it was all Tascam, but they would just constantly record. Yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. So was this lobs. recording original stuff you were writing? He was like re- yeah. writing original yeah. stuff. So he, so Mick, Mick would have even, he would take it to studios. We, we, we did quite a bit of recording, but he, he had um, like a little mini suitcase, but he, he would use like a CB radio, you know, like a, off a, you know, yeah. you know what a CB is. Yeah, you know? yeah. It used to be quite a craze, you know, before sort of mobile phones and mm. stuff, you have, you have you not seen Convoy, the film Convoy? Because a lot of truckers would use use these. You, you've got all these channels, and you can speak to who you want. You've got you basically got you can either have a desktop set or a, or a handheld yeah. set. You, you'd see these massive aerials on top of like uh, houses all over the place, and you'd know they were into CB and what have you. Right, and. Uh, so, but anyway, but he would take take one of them off, and literally put a put an XLR on it, so you could actually have yeah. like a, you know, like a what? to record with, yeah. and and, wow. and he, he had an old phone that you could use. So, you, so instead of having, I mean, these days you don't need all that. You, you've got your your laptop, yeah, and, yeah. It, and it'll filter things for you and give mm. you that effect. But they were they were just playing with stuff. You know, it was just, it was, a, it was, a, it was, you know, looking back at it, when it, it's like I said to you, Lee, about about making it. It's like it's not until sometimes you look back and you think we'd we'd already made it. Yeah, you yeah. Know? You you, you, you want to make it like in the in the business. You want to be that whatever you know. You want to sell a lot of records and things like that. But I think for me, the music is. It's about making the music. Yeah, it's about, yeah, you know, being in it. You know, yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. being in there with your yeah, friends and yeah, yeah. and and you know, and because and, that's the magical times. Because they pass, they yeah. go, they go, they, yeah. they go so quick, you know, and and it, and it's and it, yeah, we we had and like, you know, we, we just basically lived in the mill, no. you know, like yeah. And just, so were you working then? Then so is this in the nineties or late eighties? Yeah, I was in and out of work. I in and out of work, but yeah, music was the thing. Music yeah. was the thing, and yeah. it was it never really took off. I mean, I, it got until I was thirty, and I thought oh, I've, I've got to get a proper job, you know, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know. But but it was um, but it was fun times, you know. It was really fun yeah, times, yeah. really good times, you nice. know. So you were saying about obviously basically being a sort of full time musician in the sense that that's mainly what you're doing. What was the music scene like back then in Preston? Were places a lot busier generally? Um, yeah, there was there was there was such a. I, I don't. I, I, well, we play in the what's that 
rehearsal place we play in now. What's it called? Oh, um, you Gem, know, Sh- well, it's Gem Studios, I think, is the, the actual name for it. So that's pretty much where it's ended up now, and it's really good to see. I was, I was really, because the mill, you know, it, it's it's a bit cold and damp yeah, right yeah, these yeah. days, you know. But um, but at the time, you've you had all sorts of bands there. You had acid jazz. You had classic rock loads of really I mean we had Zentrix that would practice there so Zentrix were a sign band mm, at the time right. you know so they uh, there was a guy called Dougie Daggers <laughs> and, he's, and he's what a name what, and what a name and, and he fit his he fit his name perfectly um, God bless his soul but he's but uh, but again these characters were around and it was it, it was it was a different scene. Mm. It was a different mm. scene. It wasn't as much of your acoustic yeah. solo artists mm. and things yeah. like that. There was much more of a push for for getting just getting a band together and yeah. writing your own thing and just yeah yeah. Loads still loads of good covers bands around though. Really good cover artists. Good so, solo. What's um, oh, I can't remember his name now. But there's uh, there's there's a couple of really good good songwriters around in Preston at the time as well. And the Lamb, the Lamb was like full of jazz, funk, blues bands, yeah. like every week. And would that be every, maybe in the week as well? Like, because you, yeah. you know, you don't get yeah. as much weekday music maybe no. now, do you? We, my dad would take me out, you know, for a Coke, you know, because I was like, what, 16, 17. So he'd like literally take me out on a Tuesday. And he said, oh, free parking around tonight. And I mean, free parking. There's a guy called Norman Helm yeah. on bass and another local sort of, to me, a legend, you know. Great bass player, unbelievable. But he would always be in these funky, really, you know, like, yeah. or, I mean, to be honest, he's, he could play anything. But but there was all these different musicians that would, would play, yeah, funk, jazz, mm. you know, really good. Really nice. good. Yeah. Yeah. You know. so, so like obviously we said it we've asked about like the types of bands around was well really there's only sort of one venue i suppose in in preston that's really known now and that's the ferret yeah yeah how many of that type of venue was there for original music because obviously yeah See, what, what you were mainly playing what was good when when we were playing with blowback you could so that you were around the corner from the lamb so it wasn't even like um you didn't have to pay to get in it's just a pub so you could just literally walk between two pubs that were like within spitting distance mm. and you would have a live band on Friday and Saturday night for definite. But they would have bands on all week. So you'd just walk up and down and just go and have a pint in there, go and see what was going yeah. on. You know, and so they were the two main small venues. But then you had, I played the uh, Students' Union, uh, I think once. Um, that was that was with a band called Junkyard Angels. I forgot I forgot to mention them. God, Loz, Loz will be kicking me for that. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's a band that I, that, that I started with from school, and they they were like, um, like yes, yeah, what what would you call it? Have you heard of Queensrÿche? Queensrÿche, like, you know, that them, kind of not... kind of glam sort of right, glam okay. sort of rock, you know, like yeah. But but again writing their own stuff yeah you know like this is and what it's all about all this was like all the original music then was sort of going on in pubs as well like, yeah you know? yeah but it, but i mean we were lucky we were lucky that um there was a there was i think it was it was to push like when um the record companies i think wanted to push the new indie scene mm. like right at the this would have been 93 94 and the Heineken Music Festival, they had it two years running. And we had Oasis, we had Oasis in Abenham Park, but this is before anybody knew who they were. The Verve played, yeah. the Verve played, and then, but we had Carter, Unstoppable, Unstoppable Sex Machine, and all right. these other, you know, um, Boo Radleys, you had a Boo, Boo Radleys? Radleys, right. You know, Wake, wake Up Boo, wake, yeah, morning. Wake Up Boo, <laughs> yeah. But, so, so there was, but I don't know, I, I still think the music's healthy now. I still, yeah, it's I still, just different, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a different scene. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's, um, it, it seemed a little bit more accessible and there seemed to be... Uh, we know that the lockdowns yeah. really sort of like yeah. snubbed... There's, there's embers. Mm. There's embers still burning, but it's, it's really... 
I mean, it, the whole hospitality industry yeah, yeah, took yeah. a massive... But it's interesting to me how, like you were saying, Lee, like, um, you know, original music was accepted in pubs, because now if you go and have a gig, say, I don't know, at the Rose and Crown down the road, you, you can rarely have a full night of original tunes. So, no. You know, it's, you've got to do the covers and you've got to do the generic covers as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, wonder, I wonder why, I wonder when was that tipping point? When, when, you know, I wonder why that is, why people don't want to hear original stuff now and they did back then I don't know is it, is it to do with the attention span again and stuff I don't know it's an hard one it's an hard one because I think it's funny I was I was listening to a, to a podcast the other night about the fact that there seems to be like I mean I don't <laughs> I don't remember the 50s or the, or the 60s but I do remember going from the 70s to the 80s 80s, 90s, and then then into the 2000s, yeah. and there was a de- demarcation. You had you had like a run up to, from the 70s, which was which was led by punk, mm. which then brought about a new wave, which then demarked. You went straight into the 80s, which then gave it a totally different feel. 90s, you're coming up with rave, and then yeah. you're coming up with you had. I mean, when Nirvana dropped. Mm. The, and, and then you had Pearl Jam and you had all these bands when they dropped it, it literally made a huge splash yeah. you know like we had you had, you had these and, and, but leading up to that you had I mean Bon Jovi sounded really heavy to me at mm. the time <laughs> you know like whereas now it's kind of you, you, you know well I, I mean I, I, I got into all sorts of bands since like but but I think I think going into the two thousands, there's there's been a different way of producing things, and I think I think it's just with the, the techno, techno, yeah. technological age. I think yeah. it's just it, it's it's kind of blended things a little differently. Yeah, I think especially with like you know, punk and stuff, it's like fa- fashions follow that, culture follows that. Whereas with maybe music now and stuff, there isn't that movement, is there? Like you say, there's not, there's not, and I think I think. There, there is this thing where we've got screens in front of us yeah and so we we listen to music differently we we engage with it differently although it's you know to be honest i don't go out as much and see live bands but yeah. when i do the it's, it's still there yeah it's still there it's, it's just the whole yeah. the whole thing is still there yeah it's still alive and kicking yeah there's yeah. some amazing bands out there yeah. that I, i've never heard of i, yeah. Think, yeah. I think the thing is as well lee i watched the interview with frank zappa um you can find this on youtube and there's a bit in there where he's sort of talking about the music and this was maybe in the 80s and he sort of said do you know what you used to have these old guys running the music business that knew like that didn't really understand what was going on mm-hmm. they'll go we don't we don't know what it is but we'll take a chance on it and then then you all of a sudden in like the late 60s 70s maybe even the 80s young hip guys started coming in and would tell you that's not what the kids want yeah. and it was labels yeah. dictating then to what what was going out whereas in the 60s you could have you could literally have a boy band go number one one week. The next minute, the next thing, it was a seven-minute prog rock, prog yeah. song is number one. Well, as well though, the the, um, the whole the whole scene was. I think there was mm. so many more dance halls. The, the 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 act of going out was was people actually danced, mm. yeah. and they all saw there was a circuit. Mm. Yeah, you know, I can remember talking to a guy. Who, I was at a computer course, l- learning how to use Windows. It was this new thing, <laughs> <laughs> and it was. But he was talking. He, he obviously knew I was into bands, and he was talking about. It. He said, "Oh, we used to just literally." Um, oh, there was a funny story there. We, we, we stands in jail and vans. Funny, funny. Anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> and it, but he was saying that you'd literally just you'd just go be go on chip in by a Bedford van or a, or a tranny van right, yeah. and, uh, and you just go and hit the road yeah. and it, there would, but there would be like a few venues in every town because everybody that's where everybody mm. went yeah. to hear the music it, or, and it, or you'd have a jukebox but that would be in the calf 
So, mm. so things yeah, have just yeah. so yeah, they've come on so much. And how did you know? Yeah, go on, carry on. Sorry, go on, no, <laughs> no, 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 carry oh, on. It's interesting. So, did you go through? So, so we, when you were your band and you're booking gigs, how did you get the gigs? Did you go in with a, like a like a CD or a tape? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, or so did you we, go through agencies? No, well, we tried agencies, but it was more. We did a few gigs in Manchester, so it was more that we got a couple of Friday nights. We played the night and day a couple of times when I was with Stans in jail. But, Big venue, but it was, yeah, it's, it's, it's a decent venue. Mm -hmm. We got like, you know, like, we, we, and again, like you say, we were an original band. Nobody knew really who we were, yeah. but, but everybody knew that the night, the night and day was a good night out. Yeah. So if you're there on a Friday night, you'd have an audience. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you'd have people that would, would come and, and, and check you out, you know. Yeah. Um, but I suppose, I suppose the the main things with with us was Wednesday Thursdays was like showcase nights, right. Roundhouse. Uh, is it the Boardwalk? Is it Boardwalk in Manchester? Yeah, yeah, there, there is. is. Yeah, it's still there's, going. And the, the sure Star is. as well. Is it the Star? That, see, it's all changed now. Yeah, but, yeah, but there's. Um, or is that in Blackpool? I can't remember. But there's, there was a few venues that would put four or five bands on. Yeah. And you'd just get your half an hour slot. I see. And try to impress just, sort of thing. And you'd just yeah. go and go and, yeah. And you, so you'd all play to each other's mates, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did a couple of them in London. We tried it, you know, like our hand in, in London. But it's the same crack. It, it was, it's all very long shot stuff, to be honest. Yeah. You know, you'd make a demo, you'd go to a studio somewhere in Liverpool. We'd recorded a couple of times in Manchester. Uh, I'd, you know, like, say, a weekend of two sort of 10 hour sessions. Yeah. yeah. Got a demo together. Yeah. And then you'd try and push that. You know, it's, it's that kind it's of. It's tough going, yeah. It, it can be tough going. It can be tough going, but it's. But it's, I don't know, it's the fun in it. The, Definitely, the bin, yeah. You know, it's, I, mean, it's, I think it's so much easier now, but it's, it's also very fragmented, very split, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, you it's know, an oversaturation, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You, you, you can just ping things to people, can't you? But you can ping it out yeah. there, which is, there's a freedom to that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah the there's a massive problems, freedom yeah. to yeah. it, you know. So was, was there anything with any of your bands where you maybe had, like you say maybe it wasn't even necessarily your goal um, and it doesn't need to be but was there any time that you'd written a song and it, and it went somewhere or, or started to build momentum um, how would you how would you make it build momentum back then just to be honest it was, I don't think we we actually sometimes we'd do a we'd do a gig and we'd, we'd build some kind you know locally You'd get a, you'd get a decent night, and you'd get a lot of people coming in, and it was usually people um, through through friends who, who were at uni, yeah, so they, yeah. they would be a bit of a captive audience yeah. to be able to get into uni. They'd know a few people who knew a few people, yeah, yeah. and that kind of thing. But to be honest, we kind of we kind of never really 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 hit it, hard, you know, it? it? Yeah. and i think it was i think that's i think that's it i think it's it can be disheartening yeah it can no, be disheartening yeah. you, like you say but you, you seem like you did it for the love of it so yeah that's yeah and, thing, I, really. and that and that is that is the that is the buzz of it but it, it would have been nice it yeah, been nice, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, think, go, I, I think that's a whole thing with music i think people like chris in our band he, even though he doesn't write his own songs i think he's dealing with it when he's like looking out in the crowd like him and jack are like oh oh there's no one dancing so they're not enjoying it mm. yeah yeah i think it doesn't necessarily mean that like being being an acoustic act i've had to look at faces to see if people are singing along yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. i think but the f fact is some places no matter how well you sing aren't gonna like you and yeah. i think <laughs> dealing with rejection is part of music no, yeah and yeah. as long as you can remember what I always say to my students, you're going to get frustrated. It's going to be it's going to be tough at times, but yeah. as long as you can remember why you started and why you enjoyed picking yeah. up the guitar, that's, to keep that. Mm, you need to. You, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I it, think sometimes it when it's a bad night, well, a bad night, and people aren't necessarily looking at you. I, maybe wrongly but you, you you have to craft your songs to please an audience don't you so when the audience don't feel particularly pleased you're like well i wouldn't do these songs anyway do you know yeah, what i mean yeah so you're like oh well yeah if you you know it's I a bit find, like that. i find this way i'm I, i'm kind of battling with whether to carry i'm not really like a, an acoustic like you two are acoustic artists you know and yeah and, and i have done a little bit i've tried kind of singing and playing <clears throat> you know and but i, I just think 
I prefer being with a band. Yeah. And I prefer that whole... We want to dedicate you know, the next whole, part to that, actually, because it'd be thing. interesting to see how you're finding it, the acoustic side yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but it's... Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's... I think when you do your own stuff, you do it. And I don't think you care what other people no. really think. No. You do want it to engage. Yeah, you, yeah, you want it to engage, yeah. but you as long as you know you're proud of it and you want it this is where this is what you wanna say. Yeah. I think yeah. that's 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 what it's about. Yeah. You know, and I think your taste develops then. Yeah. Your taste of, of how these things come across. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's Right, can I ask one more question before we have a break? Yes, no, I'd just be interested because you were saying about... <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> You've just wasted the actual question. Oh, no, like, that's that's right. Right. that is the question. You had one question and one question only. <laughs> you got five seconds. No. Uh, no, so you're saying about mainly original stuff that you would play. How did you find, as a band collectively, that challenge of trying to win an audience over that had never heard your songs before, that had never like seen you before. How did you find that challenge of they're watching you? You've you've got a short time to try and win them over. Did you enjoy I that think, process? I or think, was it quite... I think this is I think this is the thing. I think it was. Um, I think it's for me. It's different. I, I, I see it differently. Yeah. I mean, we we were playing. We we do a we literally set up our gear and I'm talking about gear man we got <laughs> we had like huge speakers from yeah. the PA I had like a, a 15 inch and a 4 by 10 bass amp mm. like I say Mick's got his amp uh, I think I think Phil had a Marshall and then we've got a big Ludwig kit <laughs> and we're in somebody's lounge <laughs> you know and we literally just played we would just play yeah. you know and it, it's kind of for me it was more we we were just we were coming to you with it yeah whether, whether you liked yeah, it no. or whether you, you didn't it was it really was that and it was kind of we know what we're about yeah and it and it's it's uh, yeah it, do, you th do you think that's think, kind of like a youthful mindset like you know like you walk yeah. into it and you gotta think right i'm just gonna fucking own this stage and i don't give a fuck what you think yeah and like sometimes Absolutely. that attitude does get people into yeah, you, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. But the first time I saw Mick, so this is before I'd, I'd joined Stands in Jail, they literally had, it was a battle of the bands at the mill. So in the club at the mill. Mm. So they, they, they had, they had um, Bruce, who, who was this hippie, who turned, in, turned out to be an architect in the end. But he was this, this hippie who was, who was doing juggling at the front. So right. it's like, you're watching, what's going on here? <laughs> They're all setting up. They had that like this this hippie bass player like <laughs> it was like just it was really they just looked cool yeah but actually in the middle of the gig something blew up the whole PA blew up <laughs> and 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 all you could you could just about hear Mick and you could you could hear his guitar a little bit but he carried on mm. you know but he had this thing I, I don't know he was just like like you say it's like he didn't care. But he definitely had that yeah. swagger, yeah. you know, and he, and he just so and it, and for me that was what it was that was what it was about. Definitely, you know, yeah. you know yeah. it was it's kind of it's a good mentality to have. I think, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, because I because I think if you get too overconscious, I mean, obviously you want to, you know, like you we started saying you want to communicate, and you don't, so you don't want to. I don't know. Turn people away is so. Well, I, I don't know. I think sometimes you might want to yeah. ruff, ruffle people's feathers. Yeah. You, you might want to, you know, because like you, like you've mentioned Frank Zappa. Mm. There's somebody there who's sung about all sorts of things yeah. we wouldn't even think of singing about, you know, yeah, like yeah. Catholic girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of sorts of, and, and, you know, just, just the, he would politically and uh, socially make you think, mm. you know, and I think. It's, it's good yeah. it's good to be able to do that absolutely you know. yeah. right we'll better break there yeah, we'll better have a little break and uh, we'll go on to Lee's solo career now in the next part <laughs> so, uh, yeah we'll see you shortly <laughs> <laughs> hello it's Lee from the One More Songcast I do apologise about interrupting your episode but this is a public service announcement no we need people to like share subscribe and follow us across social media youtube and the podcast platforms it would really help us to reach more people reach musicians like ourselves and reach just people who like listening to podcasts so across tiktok instagram and facebook you can find us at tom's cast one 
or just simply the One More Songcast on YouTube or your favourite podcast platform, including Apple Podcasts. So, don't forget to download, rate and review on your podcast platform. Get in our comments, like, share, subscribe on YouTube. And also, just follow everything we generally do across social media. Cheers, I'll let you get back to your episode now. Hello, welcome back to the One More Songcast. We're into the third and final part of the episode now. And Lee, we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about your recent venture into um, acoustic guitar playing, mm. basically. Um, yeah, yeah. A little bit of the way that the local music industry is going, I suppose, like we said before, smaller venues and mm. um, acoustic acts. So you're having a bit of a, a go at it. How's it going so I have, far? Yeah, I've kind of, to be honest, I've hit a bit, I've, I've hit a bit of a, a lull on it because I've kind of, it's, you actually alluded to it before when you were saying, I'm, you know, when you don't connect with an audience, you kind of think to yourself, oh, well, mm-hmm. I don't even want to be playing these no, songs. No, no. And I kind of, I think I'm having that conversation with myself because I'm a solo artist, you know, you can't just turn over to your drummer and... Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. a wanker. And you, this is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you know, exactly, you know. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think... Um, I think I'm, 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 I'm sort of drawing back on it because I had, I had a couple of things booked and, I, and I, I'm, I'm looking at more writing now. I'm, yeah. I, this is what I really want to okay. be doing. I, I, you know, and I think, I think even if it, if it is just for my own pleasure, but I think I've, I've, I've really got to get it out there. And yeah, actually, yeah. So you know, let's sing. rewind a little bit then. So have you been playing acoustic guitar all your life, with the same as the bass, or is it something you no, picked no, up quite recently? I've literally bought one of, like, a couple of... How long ago now? About eighteen months ago. Right. Um, I had my dad. My dad lent me one. I had, I had a, a cheaper one that you couldn't plug in, um, and the one I borrowed off my dad's. It was all right. It was a charity shop. Yeah, special, yeah. You know, yeah. cracking, cracking yeah. the body and stuff like that. But it was. So I've, I've kind of, I've, I've just learned. I've, I've did a little bit of classical, as in just trying to get the the, the whole hand and moving yeah. and, and picking the strings, and. Um, I find I find the whole key, being being the one man band is mm. really really challenging. It's tough, isn't it? Really challenging. I mean, I know nothing else really, but uh, and the pull the pull yeah. of the, the the rhythms from your, your your vocal to the to the actual playing, yeah, and then getting that getting a vibe, yeah, which is what I was saying right it's at hard, the beginning is to be a vibe, you know, like. Yeah. It, you, you feel you feel so very bare, isn't it? Very bare. Yeah, yeah. But it's but I I found it very uh, liberating to the fact that I actually I, well, we did the the Charlie Live set, which yeah, is the, which is a proper set that I did. Like I mean, it's going back in October now, and, uh, and that that was it was it was good to actually it's like a bit of a milestone you did know, you sing you in a sweet shop or something because they have all sorts of random no, no we were in Sam's, Sam's bar, bar. Oh, Sam's right. took yeah, over yeah, Sam's yeah, bar yeah. Yeah. but I actually sang um, where was it in, it was in the youth zone so I filled in for somebody I got a call off Nigel uh, as he's likely to do and um, that was a quite a nice little city it was a bit like this actually yeah. in the sense that there was two lights a little PA and a load of like gym style okay, benches yeah, yeah. and so that yeah. people would just come in and, and come and come and watch you for a while so it was quite intimate so it was it was a little bit more in a pub people I mean I did that little backup slot for you didn't I yeah yeah and people tend to just just mm. you know like it can be quite disheartening oh yeah I think you know like you you playing your heart out you know I mean you know like I, I know I've got a lot of improving to do on that side of things, but when it's when not playing, even that though, no, you know, it's not. You know, it's no. uh, and it's and it's just, it, you know, and and they're on a night out. Mm. You know, yeah, it, it, you can't take it personally, can no, you? No, but, uh, no, it's, it's, it's easy to, yeah. So I, God, go on, I think Lee. where I think when you came down that night, the issue is with the Rose and Crown is it's people come in and people go out, like yeah. people like either start there or they come in towards the end of the night, mm. so. You were in that sort of funny space where people are half darting about. Yeah. And yeah. also, Lee, the fact is, I've seen you do this. You've got a completely different take to what other people see with this. And it's, it's weird how perceptions work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. When, I, when I saw you particularly at Chorley Live, and even, even then, like, it looked like you belonged there. You know, it's, it's, 
it is difficult to get into it yeah. and you've almost got to have that argument with yourself before yeah, that. Yeah, I think, I think as well, it, it's the, um, it's like you said, you, you, you've got, you, and you've both, I mean, I've talked to you obviously a lot more, Lee, but, but like you've said in the podcast, that you, you, you feel like a jukebox, I suppose, mm. is the way I'm mm. paraphrasing it. It's like, you, you want to, you want to play the songs that people like, mm. but they're not necessarily ones that you would pick no, out if no. you had, if you were a DJ. Not a chance. You know, no, you, no, you, and, not and I think, it, and it's it's difficult in that sense that you you're stuck in a box, aren't you? Where yeah. you you can't really go out of that box too much. And Maybe a song somewhere here or there, but really you are stuck in the Sweet Caroline. And it's the same bracket. thing, you know, yeah. like, like you say, it's the football chants. Yeah, it's the football chants. You know, with the Jerry Cinnamons you, and all got, that. It's all popular, isn't it? Yeah, so, it's, yeah, all, yeah. it's all very very popular. So let me rewind it's, a little bit then. So so acoustic guitar you picked up about eighteen months ago. Um, what about the singing side of things then? So yeah, I, I took lessons. Just before, just just before lockdown hitting, so this we're talking obviously 2020. Um, so I, I started taking singing lessons every week um, with, with Lawrence Nunes. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's a good lad. He's he's like he's um, and he's he's basically got got a, a voice out of me because I didn't have any confidence. I, I I knew I had to go and have singing lessons because I had a go first and it. And you, you feel yourself shouting, you know yeah, what it's like, yeah, you know, and yeah. I've never really done backing vocals. I was going to say, did you, you know, in, in your band days, did you no, not do any, was, yeah. And it was always a confidence thing. It was always more like, I mean, I had hair, so I just, I just, <laughs> I just, I'd just, just be into Hide it. Hide away. I, yeah, I'd just, yeah, I'd yeah. just be hidden away and just, and just into the music and that, that would, that would be, I'm quite fine with that, you know, and, it, and I suppose that's like a, a bit of an, an old to Cliff Burton because that's all he was. Was mm. it? You know, he was known as the windmill, wasn't he? Like, yeah. just like <laughs> just be like, <laughs> going round and round. <laughs> like, you know, you know. Yeah. So it's all that kind of thing. I mean, he he was some something else, but but yeah. So I think I think it's um, with with playing the acoustic guitar. It's just it's been a whole. It's, it's to be honest, it's felt like you've kept saying he's rewind. I felt like I'm rewinding to a beginner, mm. literally starting from scratch. It is hard, you know, isn't it? To, it's interesting to get though. Soul. It's yeah. interesting how, how you you are feeling that vulnerability a little bit. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. So so have you have you done any paid gigs yet, or has it been open? Or has it been open mics? No, mainly? yeah, no no paid gigs yet. No, no paid gigs. I, I've uh, yeah, I've kind of put one back. I, I had one. There's there's um there's a little circuit in um in the the working men's clubs, and it, and uh, I've got there's, there's they have like a, a little audition for what do you call it? It's like uh, they have this lunchtime session, right? Yeah. Where all the concert secretaries go, right? Bring yes. You go, bring yeah. You go right. And I, I I walked in just to just to check one out. And they, they've got they've got like pie and peas on, <laughs> and they're all they're all saying it's lunchtime. Yeah. But it's but they've got a band on, right. you know. Like they'll have two or three acts on, but all but all the concert sec- secretaries from from around. Well, to be honest, we've got a little pocket. There's not many of these clubs left. Right. Yeah. So I, I've got I, I had a, a chance at one of them, but I'm but I, like I say, at the moment I'm I've just been trying to. I've just been trying to play. I've been like using the old laptop and just putting things down and trying to trying to you know write some stuff really. But more acoustic type yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, acoustic, but with drums and and obviously with yeah. with the bass and bring it all in. Nice, nice. You know, this is this is the this is where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, yeah wicked, yeah. wicked. Yeah. So going forward, then, do you feel like you'll you'll be able to challenge yourself to overcome some of these uh, some of these challenges you face with the solo stuff, or is it a bit like this isn't me and I want to get more into the writing side? I think, to be honest, it's been a, I, I'm gonna it's been a bit. I've had a tough year this year, uh, the beginning of the year, so it's been kind of I've kind of put it on the back burner a bit, and when it comes to the songs I want to sing. It, I'm, I'm I'm unsure of what they are because because everybody does, you know. Um, Could you see yourself basically singing the generic songs of <laughs> Brown Eyed Girls and that? Is that you? And if it isn't, then it's like it's hard, isn't it? it it's is hard. really hard. Yeah. It's really hard. And I think I think that's it. I think because it's it's like I see the music business now. It's so different, mm-hmm. as in the local scene, and then seeing you guys you know like you're doing so many different things 
you're balancing plates. Yeah. You know, you know, Lee's Lee's got a couple of yeah. original things yeah, going, going on. on yeah. You've got your acoustic thing going on. You're teaching. You you know your fingers are in all the pies. You yeah. know you know, mm. and it's like whereas me, I kind of I really did have all my eggs in one basket. Yeah. Like when I was, you know, and I suppose when I when I think about it now, with me being like 50, like I just think I'm so happy to have the second bite of the cherry. No. In a yeah. way, you know, you think. I'm just happy to be actually doing it and absolutely you know and I can just plugging in and playing with all these great people yeah you absolutely. Know, it's, that's what it's about yeah so how have you found like obviously you actually did your first gig with flash floods and it was a mental gig wasn't it we uh, mental. oh we had a we had we had a gig at mine and chris's mates dad um dad's house and uh, our bassist basically original bassist simon let us down at the last minute <laughs> So Lee's could learn these songs in like two days. Yeah, yeah, it's so like ridiculous bass. like that. No, turned up like me and Chris have never met the guy. <laughs> Just turns up, rocks in like he's been in the band for years. <laughs> and then Simon's basically he's getting busier and busier at work. He could he couldn't commit to the band anymore. So literally we're like, right, Lee, can you join? Because yeah. that day he filled in. He had a beer with us all. I mean, we're playing the second set and my mate's stripping off in the middle of the dance floor. <laughs> in the mate. middle of his dad's living room. And then you start giving out awards. Like, what? Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, mate. The South like, Ribble Dream Boys. And all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't it's a joke. Like, no, this isn't a joke. Chris, like Chris proper, and a few of his mates. Uh, proper plaques. Right, you know, like, right. like, like Man of the Year 2017. Yeah. <laughs> they started a fraternity about 20 years ago. That's very American, isn't it? Yeah, fraternity. And it, is. it was just taking the mick. But on a stag do on the way to Newcastle, one of them set up a Twitter account, somehow triggered the algorithm with the first post, and they got 96 followers right. within a two hour trip. Okay, they yeah. were getting followed in Saudi Arabia. I think it's still got a few thousand right, on Twitter right. now. But um, yeah, they've, they've been cancelled a few times on Twitter as well. <laughs> I think they have, yeah. I don't That's know what kudos. they were posting back in there. That's proper kudos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, if they had chosen to monetize that, they could have been the first. Yeah. Like, they could have been bigger than anything now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think they were just about keeping it real and just yeah, getting yeah. tanked every week. Um, and yeah, it just it turned into an award ceremony. Halfway but it was, through, that was a, it? like a lockdown party, though, wasn't it? That was you know yeah. when everything was starting to loosen. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I think this guy basically wanted to open his house out. Mm. Who's, whose house was it? Was um, oh, my mate, my mate Bomber's dad, um, Andy. We call him the Godfather in the Dream Boys. Yeah, he's yeah. like he's the one you answer to. He decides who gets in and out. You see him at the gigs, but they, you know it's it's, it's good times. Good yeah, times oh, they're, they they're all, they all they are, when we go to Leyland. Um, we actually played in the old Leyland Gates the other week. Yeah, and he come in. Uh, my mate Bomber goes in four hours earlier before before we've even got yeah, there to yeah, set yeah, up. Yeah. Not before we start. Four <laughs> hours before we've set up, and he's gone. He's gone to the bar person there. Yeah. You know this. This is going to be mental later, don't you? The barman went really, and the next thing he's there with his top up in the middle of the dance floor, like <laughs> dancing with anyone and anything. It's just yeah, like it's Dave, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's good sound. But but it's, it's great sound. You know, like now we're, we've we've really gelled as a unit. Yeah, we're really gelled as a, as a band now. How does it come? How does like how does how does flash floods because obviously you play together in a band if we've not mentioned that already yeah. how, how does the band experience with with flash floods compare to some of the other bands you do you, do you obviously enjoy the experience of being yeah, in this band i really do enjoy the yeah. experience i think um the the main thing with bands i, I mean I, I spent like five years with uh stands in jail but generally bands seem to just flip Mm. You know, like they, they last a few months. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they're really difficult to keep together. And uh, and flash floods of it's a green patch, yeah. and everybody's so supportive. Good, really good, really really good. Like you know, everybody's, but everybody wants to improve. Yeah, and and it's it's the the whole sound thing. We've, we've you know, it seems to really come together. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's you all seem like a likable bunch. Yeah, as well, and that's it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that, that's, that's the thing. I think this is the thing. We've got five different people with five different influences, five yeah. different sets of influences. Yeah. Everyone's got their own ideas. Everyone wants to suggest it. See, someone suggested some in the band group, and literally we got about fifty songs yeah, there. Yeah. But when we get that one, I mean, it's it's literally like you could have someone telling you what's going on. 
but you've got Lee will direct when a song's struggling and he'll sit there and be the director yeah. and write, we need that yeah, bit more yeah, choppy yeah, and yeah, we'll yeah. sit in the rehearsal room. Poor old Chris sits there for hours. <laughs> but yeah, you're like you're like the director of the group. I do. I, I, I kind of feel like we've been. I think it, it's a bit like um, being in a footy team, mm-hmm. and you, you, a goalkeeper will have, or a defender will have a different sort of idea of how mm, yeah. the pitch is looking, how the team are looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, so then you want your centre back to yeah, be shouting out, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I think it's like that. You kind of you. Because you're a bass player, you see things from a slightly different angle, yeah. and you want everything to be propped up, definitely, so yeah. that everything can just sit nicely on. The Are you top quite of strategic it. and a bit of a perfectionist with, with yeah, like, like, structures and that kind of thing? Yeah, because yeah, it's because that's where everything mm. you, you want your pushes and your, yeah. and your, your, your dynamics definitely to absolutely. Down. You yeah. don't want it to just be full on. You yeah, know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and it, I think it's. But 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 everybody responds to that, you know, the, yeah. and, which is really good, you know, because a lot of people could. I say a lot of people, but you you um, instead of taking it personally, it's just a, definitely. Yeah, we're like it's literally like Lee speaks and everyone listens. And we're sort of like <laughs> it we're sort of like yeah. right, okay. Well, yeah. well, he's actually got a point. I mean, hey, we're, we've got we've still got some big characters in that band. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I, think every, I, I think he's still going to be careful. Yeah. About what you say. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah. there, there, is, there is times where it obviously boils over, mate. Um, but, yeah. like, generally, 90% of the time, generally, someone will say something, someone will bite, and then we're all like, oh, you yeah. yeah. And then yeah. that, the next thing, we're, we're joking about something yeah. completely different. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is the beauty of it. Normally, you get to the, get into these bands, there's arguments within the first two months. We never had that. We've kind of just gone. We've been relentless for, like, two years, yeah, haven't we, yeah. straight? Yeah. And I think... Yeah. Yeah, there's probably been a few more arguments like in the le- recent times, but like yeah. I think that's just because you, when it's that relentless and you're spending that much time yeah. together, you are going to get knackered, yeah, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think and that's the thing. Like we're trying to refresh the set, and everyone is going to have different ideas. And I think we've we've managed to l- make that set last a long time. Yeah. There's no ideas. It's going to be go, going back to what you were saying about the solo stuff. That I think that I think that's the. I think that's been what I found really difficult is is that it's like you build that material, mm. so you're building all these songs. So when you've got a repertoire that you can kind of pick from, it's like go into you your say, bag and pull out. Yeah, you, you know, yeah. you can say you can see what oh that went down alright. Yeah, I've got this one. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you can you can do that. But when you've got you, you turn up and you've got your twelve songs. Yeah, yeah. It's like we're gonna mm. float. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, and it, it's kind of you yeah. know. And it, when you're a DJ, it's a bit, I suppose it's a bit like that, innit? You can feel the no, no. and think, oh, I'll sack that. That's what I struggle with, though, because I've not been doing you know. it for a long, long time. So at the start, and even maybe now, I've I've not got the masses of songs to dip yeah, into. Yeah. So sometimes you have to just ride with it. Yeah. And, and, and you, go, and you, you know. forget sometimes as well how, how long it can... T- yeah. You can kind of learn a song, but, but to really... Yeah, really hone it. Yeah, definitely. And have it feel. Yeah, yeah. really. You and know, the week goes yeah, so fast change. between the gigs as well that you can be like, right, okay, finish my gig on Saturday for next week, and then before you know it, it's Thursday night, and you're like, ah, oh, shit, I'm gonna have to go with the same as last <laughs> yeah, week. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you've, got, you've kind of got a few on the boil. Yeah, yeah. You kind yeah, of got yeah, a few yeah, songs yeah, on the, the, the similar. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever find you're getting close to perfecting a song, and for whatever reason, you you've blagged it like a couple of weeks ago. And you've played it better then, and when when you when you've almost perfected mm. it, and it's that final little tweak, and the whole thing, yeah. the next gig falls to yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, what is going on? Like, remembering lyrics is the worst part mm. of that. If you've got a couple of lines that you can't remember, sometimes they just come to you at the last what, minute. What when you're is it, it all about when you read in the lyric? <laughs> and you've read it 50 times yeah, yeah, but his yeah. mouth still wants to say something no, no. Yeah. It, it, and it just it just blurts yeah. it out and you're like why <laughs> yeah. I still have to read the words because I have a little iPad I still have to read the words to Dakota like right. the verses of Dakota and they're just like I've never been able to process them lyrics ever and just like get them in every other that's... song I'm fine but for that I, have, I always have to look at the lyrics I'm like one sec just let me get my lyrics up it's weird like I it. genuinely think that's a universal problem with that song oh, right. I think it's <laughs> like the second and ver- third verse yeah. everyone I've seen I've seen about three covers artists recently 
and they've got the second and third verse the wrong way around. But yeah, I don't yeah, know what it is yeah. with that song. Wow. It seems to kind of sound the same. Yeah, I've yeah. sang the same verse yeah. three times before. I'm just yeah. like, <laughs> summertime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, so we, we want to wrap you up because you know you've got to get off. Um, yeah, we want to we yeah. want to just ask you quickly. Um, so obviously you've played for so many years in, in a few bands. Mm. What's the craziest or the most memorable gig story, but in terms of like bonkers or just something that sticks with you? Like oh. maybe it might be a bit of a horror story or it could be something that happened oh. to you or you put me or... on the spot there. I can't even think of a horror story. <laughs> have, I, have I talked about some horror stories before? I can't even think of any. I think <laughs> we've you... had a few, but not. <laughs> I don't. I, I want. I think, uh, I'm, I think there's got to be one word. I think. I think the cra- the craziest thing that happened with Stands in Jail was that <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Alex turned. It's not even about a gig though. But That's it, right. But but it's is is that he turned up one night before a gig in this van and it was it was a huge Merc van but he'd literally bought it for 50 quid right it had no tax no MOT no insurance we had a gig in London the day after and basically he got it checked out by a mate yeah it's all right it, it'll do <laughs> but this van was massive you know like the screen on it was like it was like a big van yeah. it was a big van so we got all the stuff in there and he literally drove it all the way to London and back we were, we were smoking spliffs we were drinking beer all the way down <laughs> seriously all the way down and back again and and did the did the gig I can't remember it was a it was like an Egyptian themed club <laughs> in Soho somewhere and um, and then drove all the way back oh, yeah. like one night yeah it just like yeah, yeah. just like you know, he drove he drove it during the day and then we drove it back at the night like after the gig and shared the driving you know <laughs> but when you you know when you think back yeah. and you think what was what yeah, were you yeah. thinking what were you thinking <laughs> at all but but yeah it's crazy gigs I think we we, we stands in jail they used to sort of empty rooms because we <laughs> we would be so loud yeah yeah we yeah, would be yeah. so loud and yeah. proud and and no, that's you cool. know but it was but we still had some good times oh, it was nice. really good yeah, right, yeah yeah last question to finish off um, so more ne- like now. Who would you recommend? It could be a solo, it could be a duo, it could be a band that's local that are gigging at the minute. Who is there? Is there a, somebody that you follow that you quite enjoy watching? Maybe not a famous band, but more local. It could be yeah, like, yeah. There's 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 a lass called Amy who um, I'm, I think she goes out as Amy Love. Okay. Uh, she's in Chorley and she plays plays her own solo uh, act, but she plays sax. I didn't know who it is, yeah. Time. She plays you know, Amy, yeah, a bit, yeah. don't she? she is it she Amy Lovey? Yeah, something it, like that, is it, yeah. Is yeah. that how she goes out? Yeah. Um, and, yeah, she, she's a cracking lass. She's, you know, and she's pushing it out there. Yeah. You know, every weekend. But, yeah, really. Multi-talented. Really lass. Yeah, yeah cool. multi-talented. Cool. Really sound lass. Good Brilliant. voice. Really good voice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really we'll, good voice. We'll put her um, Facebook page in the description for you to go and check her out as well. So, uh Massive thanks for coming on today, Lee. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Really yeah, enjoyed nice it. One. And uh, it was, yeah, it was different. I've, I've not done a podcast. Before. <laughs> yeah, I've not. I've, I've not been interviewed. Yeah, you like, just got to forget all this stuff. You've got. You've, yeah, yeah, you've got to yeah. forget. Forget it all. But it was uh, no. You. No, I enjoyed that, mate. Good host. Thank, thank you. And uh, thank you we'll much. see you soon with the Flash Floods band as well. So, yeah, we will. Yeah. yeah. Don't forget to follow us, share the stuff, like, subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you're, you're, if you're on YouTube and rate and review us on your favourite podcast platform. We'll see you next week. Nice one. Cheers. Cheers.